Animations, animations, animations! Get ready to upgrade your characters in Roblox Studio with some sick moves. I'm going to show you how to change the classic animations into ones that you create yourself. It's time to bring some life to your game and make it stand out from the rest. Let's do this. To start, the normal script that we're going to be put inside of server script service right here. So I'm just going to click on the plus icon next to that and then insert a script. So now that we have our script inside of here, I'm going to click on this and then down in properties and go down to the name and select this and change it to change animations. Something simple like that. You can name the script to whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to call it like that in case you have several scripts in server script service already. So to start, let's go ahead and get a variable for our players. Let's say local players be equal to game get service players. So let me drop a line here and let's go ahead and say local function. So we're going to create a new local function and this is going to be called on character added. So we're going to basically run this function whenever a character joins the game and actually loads and all that. So this is going to take the parameter of character. Just lower case like that. Now we say local humanoid. This will be equal to character. Wait for child. You may have to write it all out for that. And then wait for child humanoid with a capital H. It's very important that you do that. And the humanoid, basically every player has a character. And inside of that character, there's a humanoid. That's the thing that actually determines what the player's health is. It lets them be animated. It, it basically does everything for the player. And every player has one. Every monster and rig that you have needs one. So let's go ahead and find our player's animate script. So as you can see that if I went and played the game. So when I go ahead and play the game right now and then go over to workspace. Rust, open up Rusty Silly Band. And then go down to animate. You can see that Roblox already has a script inside of the player that automatically puts there where we get to mess with all its animations. So as you can see there are a lot of animations inside of here. And if you open one of these up you can see that they have a little animation inside of it that has a name. So we're basically going to be messing around with a lot of these. So you can close the animate script if you want to. You can copy this with Control and C or you can right click and press on copy. And then if you stop the game, you can go into the workspace, right click and click on paste into. So now you have the animate local script and you can see all the animations that you can change. Anyways, back inside of our change animation script, let's go ahead and get that animation script. So we're going to say local animate script. And this will be equal to character, wait for child, and then we're going to say animate. Because that's the name of the actual local script that puts that gets put into the player. So now we have our local animate script. We can end this function for now until we have our animations. So down here we need to create a new local function and this will be called on player added. So we can do this and it's important to know that the parentheses need to be here because that tells uh, whether it's a function or not. And we can also put parameters in there. In these parameters, we're going to put player. So inside of here, we can click on player.character. It's very important to use a capital C if it doesn't automatically fill it in for you. And then we're going to do appearance loaded. And so now that we have the character's appearance being loaded into the game, we're checking to make sure that it happens. We're going to connect a function to that. So basically, whenever the player joins in the game, their character will need to load. So we're waiting for their character to load. And then, we're gonna, and then we're gonna connect our on character added. So our local function that was up there, you just do this. And that will connect this function right up here to here. So whenever a player will join the game, as I said before, as soon as their character loads, it'll connect our function up here that will get their animate script and that's where we're going to actually be creating the animations. And one thing I realized is that we don't actually need this function here. So now that we have all of our other local functions set up, we're going to basically call the first function that will call the next function. So let's go ahead and say players dot player added and then we're going to connect our on player added. And one thing I just realized that I misspelled player I did played 
so I'm going to say on player edit. So we have our script here, it's very basic, it's pretty simple, and now we need to fill it up. So let's go ahead and make our animations here, we can X out of the script. So now, in order to make your own animations, you're going to be going to the avatar tab up here on the top, and then going over to the rig builder right here. Now when you click on this, a little window will pop up and you can either select R15 or R6. I believe this will work with either. So inside of the block rig, if you would like to click on that, you can. And this will insert a brand new dummy into your workspace. And if you'd like to go ahead and animate him, you can click on this little animation editor up here, still inside the avatar tab. So now that we have the animation editor open, we can go ahead and click on our dummy or hover the mouse over it and you'll see the blue box will shine around him. That means that the character, that means that the dummy has been rigged correctly. And we can click on this and Roblox will ask you to name your animation. I'm going to name this just to test tutorial because that's what I'm doing. And here you'll have all your keyframes. You can watch my video on how to animate right here in the top right to learn more about that. So I just got done making my animations here. This is just a simple run animation as you can see. What you wanna do with the run animation specifically is you wanna make sure that looping is turned on. You can press that with this little button right here. If you hover over it, it'll say toggle looping animation. Go ahead and click that and that'll turn blue. And now when you run it, you can see it'll automatically play back and forth. One thing to remember when you're making a looping animation is that you always want this last keyframe to be the exact same as the first keyframe. In order to do that, you can always delete the last keyframe, click on the front keyframe, and then copy those keyframes with right click and then copy selected. And then you can paste these over here with right click and paste keyframes. So as you can see now that the first keyframes and the last keyframes are the same, so that will be perfect for our looping animation. Another thing to know when this front animation is here is that inside the three dots to the left, you can click on that and then go down to set animation priority. This is where we need to set our animation to movement. If it's on core, which it will be when you first start and make your animation, make sure you change that to movement. That is a key factor in all of this. So now that you've got your animation, you've followed all the steps properly, go ahead and click on the three dots and click on Publish to Roblox. This window will pop up right here. You can name your walk, uh, your animation, and you can add a description to it. You can also change the creator to whether you'd want it to be a group or just by yourself. I recommend by yourself for solo developing. And then you can go ahead and click on Submit. That will load and then you have your ID right up here. You can click on this little symbol to copy it and you can close this window out. Now say I forgot to copy it and I closed the window out. No worries, you can always go to home, the home tab right here and then open up the toolbox. As you can see the toolbox will open right here and you can click on these four boxes on the top of our left right here, the, the second one from the left, and then you can go down from my models to my animations. And as you can see, my most recent walk animation will pop up right here, and you can right click and then copy asset ID. And now before, when I, we had all those animations that we had to add into the script, this is much better because instead we're just saying local run animation, right up here will be equal to quote unquote rbx asset id colon forward slash forward slash and then we can control v or right click and paste our uh, animation id right there inside of the quotation marks and right down here outside of our animate is script we can say animate script dot run because inside of our animate script that we put inside of the workspace, as you can see if we open that up, we have our run animation, that's the name of it. So, so far we've gotten to the run animation. Well, if we open this up, we can, say the we can see the name of the actual animation, and that is run anim. So over here we can say dot capital R run anim, exactly as it is over there, and then another dot animation ID with a capital I but a lowercase d and this will be equal to our run animation 
and so that will change how our player will run. We can go ahead and test that out by exiting out of the script and clicking on play. So as you can see, I've got Roblox's normal idle animation, which we will be changing later. But for now, when I start to move in any direction, my custom run animation will start playing. And as soon as I stop moving, it will stop. So let's go ahead and stop this and get back to coding. So I just got done with this simple idle animation. Now, once again, we're going to enable looping. Make sure that your first keyframe is the same as the last keyframe. And so make sure that with this one, you go to the three dots and you set your animation priority to idle. Now this will be on core again when you first make it. Go ahead and move that over to idle. This is also a key factor in our animations. So now that you've got your idle animation on looping and its animation priority is set to idle, you can go ahead and click on the three dots to the left and then click on publish to Roblox. As you can see, the window will pop right back up again. Copy the ID right here, close the window, and inside of our change animation script, we can say local idle animation will be equal to rbx asset ID colon forward slash forward slash and then our animation ID right there. And now we just do the same thing we did with our run animation. So let's say animate script, animate script with our animate script right here. We go inside of here and we find the idle animation. So we can see that it's just dot idle. So it's lowercase. Let's open that up and we have two animations here. So let's go with the first animation. We're going to say dot animation one because that's the name of the animation. And then dot animation ID. And this will be equal to our idle animation that we put up here. Let's go ahead and test this. So X out of the script and click on play once again. As you can see, just loading in my characters already doing my simple idle animation here. And it will stop playing as soon as I go ahead and move and my run animation will play. Then I stop and my idle animation will play once again. These are working perfectly. Let's go do a jump animation. So I just made this jump animation. As you can see, it's a little backflip, I wanted to do something cool. And I, when you do a jump animation, you want to make sure it's really short because you only want it to play when the player is going up. So I want to make sure that my animation is about half of a second long. It's really important that it stays there unless you have low gravity or something. So for this, I'm not going to enable looping because I don't want my character to keep on jumping, a, uh, keep on backflipping a ton of times. So I'll keep looping off, and you can feel free to experiment with it, keeping it on or off with all your animations, seeing how they do or not. And then with the three dots to the left, click on that, and then go to animation priority. And you can see that I left this one on core. This is a core animation. The character isn't really moving when they jump, and they're not idle, so I'm going to keep it at core. And now, if you followed all the steps correctly again, click on Publish to Roblox. This window again, Submit, make sure you copy the ID, close the window, and now back inside of our change animation script, we can go ahead and make our third variable for our animation. I'm going to say local jump animation to be equal to quote unquote rbx asset ID colon forward slash forward slash and then our animation ID again, you know the gist of it. So down here, animate script. Let's go back into workspace and open up our animate script. As you can see, our jump animation is just lowercase jump. So let's go ahead and change this to lowercase jump, the dot in front of it. And then inside of the jump animation thing right here, we can open that up and it's just called jump anim. So I'm going to say jump anim dot animation ID will be equal to our jump animation so here we have all of our animations that we're going to be doing today you can feel free to experiment with all of these you can even change the dance two three and all that those are the dances that will play when you type in slash e dance in the chat so you can even change those if you'd like to you can change the laugh animations, the swimming animations, all that stuff. So feel free to mess around with this. You have total creative freedom. Let's go ahead and test this script right now. So I'm going to X out of the script and click on play once again. So as you can see when I'm in, uh, my idle animation is playing. 
I can still run around, but when I jump, okay, so our jump animation isn't working properly. Let's go into the output and see what's going on. So one thing I forgot is, as you can see, jump anim is not a valid member of local script rustysillyband.animate. That means that there's some sort of spelling error because, as you can see when we stop the game, inside of our animate script, it's clearly jump anim. But, one thing I did forget is the capital J at the front, so capital let letters are incredibly important when doing this, so make sure that this is a capital J right here and including in our jump animation. And we need to make sure that this is a capital J as well. So we've got jump anim dot j animation ID equals to jump animation. All of these have capital letters, so let's go ahead and click on play. So another thing I completely forgot is that I just forgot the lowercase jump right here at the start. So that's what was going on here. Sorry if I made that confusing, but now that we've got that all cleared up, we can go ahead and test this. As you can see, there are no errors in the script so far. That is perfect, so we can X out of that. And let's go ahead and click on jump. As you can see, my backflip is playing when I do the jump. It's perfectly timed to my gravity that I've set it at. So half a second is perfect for that jump animation. 